head getting right out the door here. I promised you guys a couple funny stories. The video I did last night had a lot of bite. Oh, look at this shirt. I got this in Arizona. It says it's got Geronimo and Apache Indians on it. Homeland Security, fighting terrorism since 1492. But my dicky do disease is out of control. It don't fit me no more because of the dicky do disease. My belly stick out further than my dicky do. I'm getting a belly on me. Last time I went to Johnny's, I got out of the car and I was tucking in my belly. And he goes, damn, you are getting a belly. And I said, fuck you, dude. I'm fucking tucking it in, you asshole. But ain't wearing that shirt. It really shows. I got my Belleville trash on. It's right next door to East St. Louis. This is where I grew up from freshman year. When we moved to Arizona, how old was I? Oh, uh, 97. We moved out to Arizona in 97. A few years after I got out of prison. Take my butterfly knife. Can't take, I'm not supposed to have any of them, but I gotta have something. This one Johnny gave me. He gave me this a couple weeks ago. Look at this thing. I like it. My friends own all the way to my heart. And I've gave all my brothers. I'm waiting on one I ordered for Shane. They've all been in a max. I've known all of them over 40 years. Um, there's six of us that get together for poker once a month. and I gave them all a knife. That's the way I say I love you to somebody except for Amy. I give them a knife. Because when I give you a knife, I love knives. So when I give you one, I don't know, it's like me saying I love you. And it's also saying, I know you ain't going to stick it in my back. In prison, you don't give people knives. And then my rattlesnake skin wallet. I got that in Tombstone, Arizona, man, four or five years ago. And that thing's holding up good. I only paid like 40 bucks for it. They got a store down there that has leather and different stuff in it. Okay. There's Amy's great-grandma. She reminds me of the Wicked Witch of the West, though. Whenever I'm going down the hall, her eyes follow me, too. She looks like a mean old lady. They were tough back then, though. They had to be. It had to be tough. That's an old frame, too. Well, that's my grandma, and she was born in 1900. Antique frame. Amy's her mother's daughter. Uh, she is most definitely her mama's daughter. Just looks like her mama, and she's got her mother's heart. Her mother was a nurse, and she volunteered hospice. Uh, did volunteer hospice work. That's why I got so pissed off. Oh, and my foo-foo. I put my foo-foo on. I was, I, one of the kids moved out and left it, so I use it. I grew up with that old spice. The old spice. She got the dogs. This is Nate Dog's room. That's where the Nate Dog sleeps. She got she got the dogs in that pillow. And Mochi, he, he'll take his and he'll put his head in it, but this way. He, he loves his neck pillow. Look at Nate. He left the damn Miller beer in here. Look, with the straw and everything. What the hell is he thinking? He'll kill me if I pour it out. Well, I ain't gonna leave it in there. It'll be stinking and shit. So I'm gonna pour it out. He'll have to get over it. And he'll watch this video too. My Nate Dog. He's my best friend in the world. We've been friends since 
1983. Fire. He's been tried, tested, and found worthy in every single way. There's Amy playing Minecraft. And see, she sits on the floor. She bought this couch. She liked it, but she never sat in it. Oh, God, what was that gal's name? Well, bottom line, she got, she's, she's wee. And she sits on the couch, and it's like her little feet hang off the edge, and it's not comfortable for her. So she sits down on the floor, and I'm always like, I don't like it. Because to me, when she's sitting down there, it's like she's a dog. It's just what it makes me think of. It's like I'm up here, she's down here, and I don't like it at all. And I get upset about it, but she says she's not comfortable. What was that Gail's name? Used to be in the rocking chair. It was like an oversized rocking chair. A woman. Big, comfy couch, no, not the big comfy couch. That's what the kids watch. This is old school. She'd go, and that's the truth. <laughs> and give raspberries. Oh, I don't brunette she was a comedian actress or something it was on laughing wasn't it or maybe it was on one of those shows i don't know but she'd always go and that's the truth and she sounded like she had a cold okay i gotta get the keys got the keys i i'll give you a kiss baby i gotta take stuff out i'm just gonna take my butterfly knife today i had a real nice sword very expensive sword. My buddy Eric was dying and I gave it to him though. And then his sister's probably sold it for drugs. But I gave it to him. Uh, let me get this. But anyways, those funny stories. Oh yeah, gotta get the welding. <laughs> Alan. I was talking about Cindy, you know, saying she used to hate my guts and all that. She's got a son named Alan, and he has autism. Uh, he's not high-functioning at all. He's very, he's like a child. He's 28 years old, but he's like a, a 11, 12-year-old kid. I get messages from him all day. Do you have a broken phone, yes or no? Because he, he takes them and lines them up and does stuff with them. And I always give him my broken phones, bless his heart. I get the keys, I'm a jackass. You're out here barefoot, baby. There's our little wee house. I need to get that weeded. That was my grandma's Mary statue. I repainted it. I was looking for something for the lips and Amy come out with this real bright red fingernail polish. And I said, I ain't dressing the Blessed Mother up like a harlot. And she had some light pink we went with. And then, uh, but anyways, back to Alan. He, he was dating this girl, and this was like last year. She was an adult too, but she had the mind of a child. And they were boyfriend, girlfriend. Well, they were together a long time, and they broke up. And little Alan was heartbroken. And he called me one day, and he was he was sad. He was telling me how sad he was, and and I tried to tell him the story about my first wife and how she had to go so Amy could come. You know, the right one's gonna come along, and and all this other stuff, and he uh. He goes, yeah, he goes, I think I'm just going to turn gay. <laughs> I started laughing so hard. I said, Alan, let's just stick with sad for right now, okay? <laughs> but he, he's just the sweetest thing. And Nate one time, he was over there, and I don't know what this dude was thinking, because Dwayne was there too. My buddy Dwayne, he's the one that called me back asking what happened to me when I came back after 15 years. Everybody's saying you're nice, he said. He said, you're the most violent man I ever met in my life. And at the time, I didn't have an answer, but I've told him since. God softened my heart in prison. 
and his infinite wisdom, he sent Amy to teach me love again. But this dude grabbed Alan by the throat. I mean, grown man. And Nate took it to him. And I never thought I'd ever hear Dwayne admit he was afraid of anything. But he said, Mark, I thought he was going to kill him. He said, I kicked him as hard as I could two times. He goes, it didn't even phase him. He said, after the second kick, he turned and looked at me, and he said, it scared the shit out of me to look in his eyes. And uh, so, yeah, I know. I mean, every, Nate's fingers look like a professional wide receiver. They, they're all crooked, going in different directions from breaking his fingers, punching people. But uh, he called his mom, or Dustin, my buddy Tommy, that got deported to Germany. We were, I was riding Robin up to get Kristen. She had stabbed somebody up there. The guy, <laughs> It, and it isn't like she stabbed somebody that was weak. She stabbed the guy she was with because he put his hands on her, and she stuck him. It wasn't life-threatening or nothing, but she stabbed him. So we went up to get her, and on the way back, Dustin called Robin. She's one of our sisters, a bitch. And they turned around and started hitting him. And I pulled the car over, and I grabbed Nate by the by his his shirt and I, I pulled with everything I had and he didn't even budge and I thought oh shit I got the bull by the horns and he turned around and sat down not because he's afraid of me not because he had to but because he respects me and uh, he said don't you ever call your mom pitch again I turned around and look at Dustin and he had a his cheeks just sticking out, big old lump on it. And I bet he ain't called her a bitch since then. Uh, me and Nate's lost our moms. Uh, somebody, when people don't treat their mothers good, it really affects me too. I'm like, you ain't gonna have them forever, motherfucker. But, yeah, Alan, I think I'm gonna go gay. <laughs> God bless him. And then, I, I hate telling the story though, but it is funny as fuck. We were out in Arizona. We just moved out there. We stayed at my mom's about four or five months till we got jobs and got our own place out there. And there was a bunch of Mexican men putting Saltillo tile down on her back patio. Well, me and my daughter Tiffany, we were having a tea party and doing dress up. She had gotten, for a Christmas or a birthday, she got this big dress up kit. So I've got all this plastic rings and necklaces and this feathery scarf thing. It's like feathers. What's that called again? A boa. A boa? That's what boa. you throw and wrap the lace. Boa. A boa? A feather boa. It was a feather boa and uh, Tierra, all this shit. Well, my mom's just a nervous wreck. She's like, oh, God, I hope they're doing a good job. I hope they know what they're doing. And she's freaking out. So I figured I'm going to go out, make sure these guys are doing what they're supposed to be doing, and, and my mother can relax. And I took off shit, and I went out there, and I mean, I had my shorts on. Back then, I was, I was not never big, but I was chiseled cut. I mean, cut. And I walked out there just in shorts, you know, I puffed up like a rooster, big tough guy. I'm going to intimidate these guys. I said, I hope you guys are doing a good job for my mother. And they all just stood there and looked at me with their mouths hanging open. And I'm looking at all of them. I walk back, back in the slide glass door. Amy was sitting at the kitchen table and my mom was over doing something in the sink. And I said, mom, I think they're fucking retarded. And she turned around, and oh my God, she started laughing so hard. She had tears rolling down her cheeks. She says, oh my God, Mark, come here. And I walked over, she reached up on my head, and I got this little princess, Princess Tierra crown on for playing dress up there. I forgot to take off. So I'm out there trying to be macho man Mark. And with a Princess Tierra fucking crown on. 
she, Amy that day, whenever she laughed, she did the, huh, you know, that's, whenever she does that, that's where the, the serious belly laughs coming. Yeah. My mother was something else. I'm grateful for them 15 years out there. I got to be a good son to her. I found out the truth about everything. When my mama died, we were at peace. And then looking back on it, she fought harder than anybody for me. And she knew her son. I had a bunch of notebooks and stuff, all the places she put me in, she kept journals. And I read them over and over and over. And it's just a mother's heartache. And I was just mentally scourging myself, just reading them. I didn't get offered none of my mother's ashes when she died, nothing. But I got some of her hair in my room. When I was come back for the last time, the chemo, her, and the, her hair was falling out, and my Uncle Rick cut her hair, and I swept it up, snuck it all in a plastic bag. I got it double bagged. I don't open it often. I don't want to lose its smell, but when I open it, I can close my eyes and smell. It's like I'm hugging my mother. She caught me one time with two strippers in bed. She come home early from out of town. <laughs> oh my God, she's calling them Jezebels, floozies. I mean, ran them up out of the house. We had a big barrel party the night before. Kid. She, she she comes up and she looks at the room and she says, I've never been so disgusted with you in all my life. Don't even say a word to me. And she went to her room and I heard her say, God damn you, Jimmy Smith. And I look out the door and here comes Jimmy running ball naked out of their master closet. Man, he's running down the steps and he got one of my stepdad's ties sticking in the crack of his ass. He left the house naked and shit in his car fucking trying to get away from my mother. She's something else. Little bitty tiny thing. Boy, she had a tongue like a double-edged sword and very charismatic woman. Very charismatic. I wrote this for her. I got, right before I got sentenced, and I did all the drawing on it, it's called Mama Bear, I don't know if you can see that, hold on, it's called Mama Bear, the best piece of art I ever did in my life, it was on the back of one of them big calendars that used to go on desks, and I sent it to my father, and I told him to give it to my ex-wife, Oh, she ain't getting there. She won't take care of it. Blah, 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 blah. I asked him for that about six months before me and him had it out finally. And he didn't know where it was. My mother kept that in her bedside side drawer right by her bed until the day she died. And I had forgotten about it. It's got my initial says 1992 at the bottom. You know, Ruchi. Says a cub was born on a summer's day. He had to run and he had to play. Safe in the world without a care. All because of Mama Bear. Time passed by and learning began. He had to study nature's plan. Left at the school without a scare. All because of Mama Bear. The scrapes, bruises, hurts and tears. The sadness, sorrows, pains, and fears. Barely escaping all of life's snares. All because of Mama Bear. The older he got, further he'd roam. Looking for adventure, forgetting his home. No matter how lonely, love's still there. All because of Mama Bear. Then one day, hunters had struck. Our young cub ran out of luck. Thrown in a cage, kept far from view. He learned violence, hate, and emptiness too. But the love remains. It will always be there. And then it says, thanks, dot, 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 to the love of Mama Bear. 
I need to get a new frame for this one. Look at that, it's falling apart. I'll show you. Yeah, I ended up throwing all of those journals away except for just one. I owed it to my mother to read it, but the way I was reading them over and over just wasn't healthy. Yeah, right there it says MV92. Did it with an ink pen. There was, I used to always draw the outline with pencil and then I would shade it dark to light with the ink pen. I'd hook up envelopes, shit like that. Get some Zuzus and Wham Whams. But uh, that was actually, I used to go to the, there was tutors that would come in. I didn't need no tutoring. <laughs> Fucking, I, I mean, I was never stupid. I didn't need no tutoring. I went just get out of the fucking block. And they were, they they used the tutoring excuse to come and talk to you about Jesus. But uh, I showed it, I was working on it in there. And the one woman said, do you mind if I get a copy of this? And I said, no. And she, she got a copy of it. She worked at Belvoir Area College. And they actually published it in the newsletter. But I got, I shed blood over that. There was a guy, everybody's always looking over your shoulder in, in jail. And this guy, what am I forgetting? I always forget something. This guy, uh, I guess not. He, he. He must have been looking over my shoulder while I was working on it. I mean, I erased the words and put different words. It, it, it took me a minute to finish it. But I saw him. The words were there on his piece of paper. I said, what's that, man? He goes, I'm sending it to my mom. And I said, that's mine, motherfucker. And, you know, I should have been looking back on it. I should have been honored that, you know, he thought it was good enough to send to his mom. But to me, at the time, that was a piece of me I was giving to my mother. And I felt like he was taking it from me. So I told him, I said, give it to me, man. And he didn't want to come up off of it. And you guys asked me for it. But I wish I wouldn't have done that. Wish I wouldn't have done it. I sent a copy of it out to Miss Smiley. And I sent one to... Uh, I gotta let Amy have the original. Who else I sent to? Miss Smiley, Bobby Kings, my brother Bobby Kings, my mama Monroe. Uh, and didn't I send one to Audrey down in Mexico City? And there was somebody else. Did I send one to Jen? Maganta? I don't know. I sent another one. But, uh, Miss Marlene, you need one, too. If you live by Harvey's, maybe I can get one down that way or something. I got copies of it. I just can't give the original away. It's Amy's. But, yeah. And then, that's my grandbabies. Me and my daughter's children there. My little Liam, my daughter's son, and here's my boys. Some boys right there. The pictures. A few years old though. And then that's my daughter. My oldest Nathan. He was two weeks old when I met my first wife. But I raised him. And I got bonded to him. That's my son, Seth. Me and Amy's son, Joshua Jacob. And my Tiffany Rose. Her mom got to pick. Me and Monaco, I mean Monica, we had a deal. She picked the first name on girls, I get the middle name. On boys, I picked first, she gets the middle. <coughs> we got three women in my family whose middle name is Rose. I called her Rose Garden. My grandmother's name was R Rosemary Zenobia Conkler. That's where the Bohemian comes from, but. 
They, she was a great woman. My daughter, her cousin Brenna, and uh, her cousin Marissa all have Rose for the middle name. If I could have picked first name, I would have gave her Rosemary. But Monica picked Tiffany. I'm like, why are you picking Tiffany? Because at that time, whenever I'd think of a Tiffany, I'd think of a stripper or something. And she said, no offenses to all the Tiffany's out there. But, yeah. And then so she said, well, that's what I want to name her. And so I gave her the middle name, Rose. Well, then I found out there's a hybrid T, Rose, that's called the Tiffany Rose. It's like a, got yellow on the edges, and it's pink, pink with yellow edges. It's a hybrid tea rose variety of the rose plant, the Tiffany Rose. Yeah, my grandma Rose was something else. She was something else, she was a tough gal. But I'm gonna get off here. I don't wanna do a video while I'm driving. I'll get this downloaded. I promised you guys a couple funny stories. Love and respect. Peace out. Say bye. Bye. She doing her Minecraft game. She, see, I do the main stuff, but she tricks it out. We got a server we got, and we can have people on it, but she's the one that makes everything look so cool. I just do the rough stuff, and then she comes behind me and decorates it and makes it all look cool. Oh, you got the water in for the mm -hmm. potion stand? Yeah. It's alchemy. Yeah, looks muy bonita. I've got them all.